In this video, I want to show you how to calculate the materials quantity variance, which is also known as the materials yield variance, when the amount of materials purchased is different from the amount of materials that are actually used. So let's say we have a company called the Chocolate Factory and they manufacture chocolate bars and so they should pay $10 per pound of chocolate. That's one of the company's standards and another standard is they should use 0 0.05 pounds of chocolate to make one chocolate bar. Okay. Then actually during the period they pay $48,000 for 4,000 pounds of chocolate and then they use 3,600 pounds. So notice they bought 4,000 pounds but they use 3,600 pounds, so it's not the same. So the amount used, we've got 3,600. The amount purchased is 4,000. This is going to be important because when you go to calculate your price variance, you want to use the amount that you purchased. But when you go to you do the quantity variance for the amount we used, did we do a good job or not, we're going to use this 3,600. We're not going to care about the amount we purchased. And I'll go over that. So we use uh, 3,600 pounds to make... 60,000 chocolate bars. So I like to always set things up where I've got AQ, actual quantity times actual price, actual quantity times standard price, and then the difference there is the price variance. I've actually written it out just in case you were curious what the price variance was. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to calculate the quantity variance, which is the difference between the actual quantity times the standard price and the standard quantity times the standard price. But here's the catch. Here's the catch. When you go to calculate the price variance, and we do the AQ times SP, we're going to use the 4,000 pounds times $10. But that's only to figure, did we get a good price? Did we do a good job with the, the, with the price variance? When we do the quantity variance, we are going to ignore that 4,000. So actually, that's why I've written this in a weird way, and I've got this. So what, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, what was the actual quantity used? Well, that was 3,600 pounds times ten dollars which is the standard price so this this is still actual quantity but it's actual quantity used I'm just gonna put AQ used whereas when you're doing the price variance it's AQ purchased okay and then the standard price is that's just the same so that's just that ten, that same ten dollars so the only difference here is instead of using this four thousand we're using the thirty six hundred to get the quantity variance okay so that's if we take ten dollars times thirty six hundred, that's thirty six thousand dollars total. That's our AQ times SP, actual quantity times standard price. And then to get the standard quantities times standard price, we have to say, okay, what was our standard quantity? Well, we made sixty thousand chocolate bars, and it was supposed to take 0 0.05 pounds of chocolate per bar. So if we multiply 0 0.05 times sixty thousand, that would give us uh, three thousand pounds. Okay, that would be three thousand. So 3,000 so that's going to be our standard quantity is 3,000 times standard price again is ten dollars. That's just that's just from here. So if we multiply those out, that gives us thirty thousand dollars. That's our SQ times SP. So now we compare the thirty thousand to the thirty six thousand, and we see that there's a, a quantity variance of six thousand dollars. Now the question is, is that favorable or unfavorable? Well, let's think about it. It was supposed to, by company standards, it was supposed to take us 3,000 pounds of chocolate to make 60,000 chocolate bars. And yet, we actually used 3,600 pounds. So we used 600 pounds more of chocolate than what we, what we thought per the company standards it would take to make 60,000 chocolate bars. So we would say that this is an unfavorable quantity variance. So we used more chocolate than we should should have to, to make all these chocolate bars. Now, here's the thing. Now, we've got our price variance that we calculate, or that, you know, I'm sure you hit another video how to calculate the price variance if, if you're not clear on this. Uh, but, and we've got our quantity variance. Now, normally, normally, when the amount that is purchased, the, the quantity purchased and the amount used are the same, you can actually add the price variance and the quantity variance together to get a total variance. However, when the amount that is purchased, the quantities purchased, which is in this case 4,000 pounds of chocolate, is different from the quantity you actually use, which is 3,600, you cannot have a total variance. You can't, you can't add this and this together. It, it wouldn't make sense. So there is no way to compute a total variance uh, in situations like this.